Hello, everyone. Hi, welcome to another Wednesday So in Chat. Sorry, we forgot to schedule this earlier, <laughs> but we got it up and we're here. I'm just going to be working on this Dresden quilt some more, hand stitching it. Uh, yeah, because how much more do you have to go? Oh, a lot. Oh. <laughs> a lot. Oh, you're still like because I'm still not even done going around. Oh no! The, what what somebody said let, that gets a seminal sashing. Oh yeah, seminal sashing. And that. so I need to decide what to do on the border. Got some good ideas last time. Um. So there's a lot more to still do. I wish I had just stabilized it all by machine, like stitched it. But live and learn. <laughs> I hope everyone is doing well. Thanks for hopping on with us. Yes. Um, and I, so I forgot to set this up. It's my fault. So I didn't have time to research questions. So I'm typing in questions right now that we will talk about later. <laughs> I um, know we had like, talked about few, a few recently that we wanted to add in, but um, yeah. Some, some weeks are just more hectic than others. And I know all of you are familiar with how that can happen. So, um, yeah. So, um, we have a couple of things to talk about, um, that we will get to. Um, CPA underscore Gmail. Interesting. Um, Hi, Lewayne. Hi, Siberian Wind. Hi, Charlotte and Zaza. Oh, I see Sean's in. Hi, Sean. Oh, Sean. I didn't. Oh, there he is. Yep. <laughs> Dr. Kathy is here. So that's always good. Um, Maple Stitch is asking if the cameras are fuzzy. They don't look fuzzy on our end. Oh, they do <laughs> on YouTube, though. So. Oh, I bet we didn't go into YouTube and fix it since we were rushing to set it up. Did you go into YouTube and fix everything? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I did. Oh, then well, I, so now they look fine. So I don't know. It may have just taken a minute. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. On YouTube, it looks fine for me now. It did look fuzzy, but now it's. Better. I don't know. Um. So Sherry says she's crocheting at the moment. Ooh, I so have never good. been able to figure out how to crochet. So I'm impressed with anyone who can do it and make it turn into a square if it's meant to be a square. Because when I tried, it turned into a triangle because I had a really hard time noticing where the, where to pick up the stitches at. Um, so I can knit, but I could never crochet. Yeah, I've never even tried. I've never even really tried um, a lot of things, but definitely have not tried crochet. I saw you try to do it, and I'm like, that's too much work. <laughs> I love too much work. so many crochet patterns are really, really cute. And I feel like you can do a little more with crochet than knit. But knitting I could do, I picked up easily. Um, never could figure out crochet. I need to try again, though. It's been a while. I've grown. I, I'm smarter. <laughs> Um, I feel like I want to think I'm getting smarter as I get older, but I feel like I'm just forgetting more stuff I used to knew. Used I, to know. I feel like I just get frustrated easier now. I feel like that's where I'm at. <laughs> that simple things frustrate me. Um, oh, that's a. <clears throat> have you already put all the questions in? Okay, this is just a bonus question. If he has. Like, do you have any pet peeves? Isn't that what it's called? Like a yeah. pet, like mine, I have so many. When people don't use a blinker, it's one. Well, I think just driving is a pet peeve because people <laughs> don't use blinkers. People change. Um, is it, here in Houston, it's unique because it's the worst design, <coughs> excuse me, worst design system I've ever seen. Where you'll literally have <clears throat> exit lanes to get off the freeway and entrance lanes <clears throat> all at the same time. Yeah. And you have eight lanes and you'll have people on the far left lane that need to get off in a quarter mile and they just zip through. So driving is, <clears throat> is a pet peeve. <clears throat> like swallowed something. I don't know what it is. It's like in the back of my throat. 
Um, so one thing, um, we have had multiple requests for a particular product variation. And so I it reached a critical mass <laughs> where there were enough people requesting it that I decided. Well, and honestly, <clears throat> somebody finally brought up a point that I'm like, oh, okay, I can see that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, for this one, yes. Okay. I, maybe you don't know what I'm. What I'm. I don't. Yeah. But, um, so I have given in, and I have made the trim locks in. Essentially, we're calling it clear. It is basically clear, as you can see. Um, but it has a very light green tint to it, which I like because the very like I've looked at making some in clear, and I did, and they. They just look so plain. So this gives it a little bit of flavor, but it's essentially clear. Um, we've had a couple people or multiple people ask. So all of the trim locks are currently available in clear. Can you hand it to me? Because I'll show no. what. Um, yeah. So the re one of the people that asked for this was because they said it was hard for them to see through it if they're fussy cutting. So I kind of get it for that so you can see the design better. Hopefully you can see on the camera. Well, you yeah. can't really. Well, you can somewhat. You, you, can, see see, you can see through that. You can see your design better. So so these are all available. They're on the website right now. Um, we also made the uh, slide locks in the clear stuff. Um, I haven't put these on the website because we haven't taken pictures of them, but they'll be on the website tomorrow. Um, but. For those who were waiting for that or those who wanted it, it is now available. And yeah. Um, Donna says they sell cars there where she lives without blinkers. Or at least that's what she thinks because no one uses them. <laughs> is that handmade by Ying? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Donna. So Donna, if you... <sighs> It's way over there. Okay, so Donna had a great video go up today where she's showing the fabrics she use, is going to use in my Dancing Stars quilt pattern. So definitely check that out and follow along with her as she makes it. I'm really excited to see that come together. Uh, if you don't know, last week I posted the, um, the new Dancing Stars pattern on our website and then we also um, have a tutorial on the channel here for that pattern but she's going to be sewing two different versions of it and one of them is for a quilts of valor and she chose uh, some beautiful fabrics for it but I'm excited because I think it's going to kind of make it look like um, fireworks exploding on the quilt because it has the stars oh, and then cool. all the chains going through so um, she explains what she's doing much better than I can on here because she shows the fabric in her video as she as she does it. So you should check out that video um, after we're done here. Um, so, yeah, for anyone that, that has already ordered the, the original trim lots and wanted the clear, I apologize. It was never my intent to make clear. Uh, but we've just gotten numerous requests, and I, I did in fact talk to one of our wholesale shops, and she said that she had like ten customers come in who have bad eyesight, and they thought they would use a clear, but they wouldn't buy the the yellow, green, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that sort of pushed it over the edge. So the thing for me with the clear is, I feel like I can see the lines for doing half square triangles better on the green because it kind of glows and lights up. Yeah. This one, I think it can be a little harder to see the lines, but I see that for people who are wanting to use it a lot for fussy cutting and for cutting scraps to a particular size, I can see that <clears throat> one working a little better there. But you know, they all essentially work the same. So. Yeah. <laughs> So Siberian says her pet peeve is when people park over the lines in the parking lot. I am 100% on board. I have a large truck, and for I have no idea why. I live in Texas, which I believe is like the truck capital of the world, and I don't have one of those dumb, I apologize if you do, like mm -hmm. stupid lifted trucks that's like eight feet in the air where you have to like get a ladder to jump in, um, but I have a large truck, and it is big, it is wide, it is long, 
And I feel like I I'm hitting at wires. all of the places that you would typically go, grocery stores, restaurants, etc., they're all tiny ass parking lot spaces. Yeah, we have like, like many parking lots. We live lots in here. Texas. Like everyone has a truck. Like, why are the spaces so small? So it's already hard enough for me just to fit in a regular spot. But I you'll like see people in like little mini Coopers or Fiats that are parked on the line. And it's like, what are you doing? Because now I can't park. Well, I loved when when you used to have to go downtown to work, that oh, one God. parking garage that you would go in. <clears throat> like it was so small and the the what layer the layer it's not layers. What am I the thinking? levels? Yeah, levels. <laughs> the levels are so you I mean you had to basically pray that you weren't gonna that it didn't shift any and you weren't gonna scrape the top of your truck across it yeah so i don't have a lifted truck it is a large truck but it's not lifted but there are like several parking garages in downtown houston i cannot park in because they the clearance is six feet or six two or six four it's like you can't even fit a regular truck in that yeah. um sean says his philosophy with driving is think about the stupidest thing someone could do and expect that if they do <laughs> it you're prepared and if they don't you're presently surprised mm -hmm. I will say this, I, I had um, my old um, gunnery sergeant in the Marines, he used to say, and I loved it, and maybe it's crass or crude or, you know. So uh, should you say it? I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> His thought was, if everyone, when they got their driver's license, got like three grenades, mm -hmm. right, that they could use with impunity. If you see someone cut you off and you really want to throw your grenade at them, you can but you only get three. Um, he said, if we issued three grenades to everyone that got the driver's license, everyone would drive much better because you never know when you're going to be the one that gets <laughs> you know, the grenade thrown. At you. I don't think that's a good idea, but I get his point. <laughs> I mean, he's got a point. Like, Yeah, but I feel like throwing a grenade at somebody to cut you off is probably not oh, a I agree. valid reason. But I bet you don't want to cut anyone off if they knew they could get grenaded. Yeah, I get that point of it. But... So... Um, Zaza says that I still don't understand why I chose to sew right at know. seams. Zaza mm -hmm. says she really hates it when people park in parent and child spaces or disabled spaces when they don't qualify. Yeah. That pisses me off too. Um, because one, like we're parents with children, but we would never park in those spaces because our kids are not the ones that those spaces are meant for. But I remember like having because our kids are a year apart. So you could have a one and a two year old or a two and a three or three and a four. Um, and trying to go into the store is like herding cattle. It's ridiculous. No one wants to do it. And so having a parking space that allows you to get a little bit closer is very helpful. And at least here, some of the stores are actually a bit wider. So it makes it easier to get in and out. But people who use those and the disabled ones are just despicable. It's like they're there for a reason. And it bothers the crap out of me when people do that. So. And then Dr. Kathy Smith also says she hates when people assume you don't belong in a disabled parking place because you don't look sick, even though you have a sticker. I will say this about that one. Um, I have seen numerous times, and I know people who do this, where they will bo borrow their spouse's car, their grandfather's car, their you know someone else's car and their family who does, in fact, have a disability, and they use the parking space even though they're totally ambulatory and have no issues. Um, I mean, I know people who have done that. They're like, oh, my grandpa, like I, this is another one. Um, I knew somebody, not a friend of mine, whose grandpa was a POW and had a POW license plate. And this person would use his car whenever he could because he would never get pulled over because he had a POW plate and he would like abuse that privilege. So there are some people who abuse those privileges. Uh, but I do agree that there are many conditions where someone might have a disabled parking permit that don't manifest itself in a physical issue that people can readily see. Um, I'd say like, I sometimes see and question whether they really need to park there, but I would never be one of those people that confront someone. I'm just like, you know, karma is all going to work itself out at some point, but I would never say anything to someone because you just don't know. But I am the type of person where I always park in the back of the parking lot because then I just don't have to worry about how everyone else parked. So um, it's just never something I have to worry about. 
I, one of my pet peeves though, is when people leave their cart in the part of the, just like the handicap parking where it's meant for somebody to get a wheelchair out. Well, I don't like when people don't put their cart back in general, but I'm always like, that's space is there so that somebody can get in and out of that, that parking spot. Um, yeah, it's just sort of crap. Um, Oh, sewing with Lloyd has never heard of a parent child space. Yeah, they have them all over they in them all Texas. Over here. They had them a Michigan. lot in Michigan too. Um, they're really nice because if you if you have like when ours were really close together, I don't know if we ever used them that often, but they were always nice because you had a little more space sometimes for strollers to put yeah. it up next to the car, and then they're closer up and everything. But um, yeah, um, I so I've seen it. I've seen like if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, they almost always have uh, veteran parking spaces. Mm -hmm. So those are nice. I never use them because I like to park in the back, so no one door dings me. But I do like the idea that if I wanted to, I could. Um, so I've seen veterans parking spaces. I've seen police or first responder. I've seen uh, you know parents with children, mm -hmm. dis disabled, obviously. Um, I think those are all the ones I've seen. Yeah. So, oh, hey, Amy. Amy's here. Hi, Amy. Uh, oh. You all need to watch Amy and Donna, Handmade Biking with Donna's videos, uh, where they show what they did with their um, their challenge with uh, clothing from a thrift shop. That was a lot of fun. Amy split shirts in half, um, all kinds of stuff in half from the thrift shop, sent it to Donna. And they each uh, made a quilt from it. And that was a lot of fun to see what they each made. It's fun that they both had the exact same fabrics, but their quilts both look so different. Um, so, Chris, this is one that I also uh, hate. People who do not return their shopping carts to the cart corral. Um, I, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I see, especially at Costco, which is like, Costco is usually like a great place. It's not like a Walmart or anything, but at Costco, I will see people who are literally parked right by right one. <laughs> by the cart area, and they just leave their cart in the middle of the lane. So it makes it's already hard enough to park at Costco because it's always crowded. But it's just like, how hard is it though? I see people park like literally a quarter mile away from the entrance because that's how far you have to park to get into Costco, and they walk all the way into the store. They come all the way back out with a cart. And then they don't walk the 12 feet to put it away. It's like, what are we doing? Um, and and where our Costco is, some people will put their carts up on the curb that goes into the street. So like a cart can just fly into the street and hit a car that's driving by at 20 miles an hour. So hate it, hate it, hate it. Um, Amy, I don't think you've chimed, chimed in, but I have to imagine you have some really good pet peeves. So feel free. That she can't pet the puppies at the airport. Oh, that's true. She can't pet puppies at the airport. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm sure she has some others, but <laughs> that one comes to mind because I just thought that was so funny. Jay-Z or Jazzy Joyce would like to know what type of batting you were using. I don't know, but I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's from so long ago. I honestly don't remember, but it's got to be some sort of polyester batting and I do not love it at all. It must have just been on sale and I thought I would try it because I've never uh had never used it and i i can tell you i've never bought it again <laughs> whatever it, whatever it is but this quilt's what did we figure out probably four years in the making oh I, at least yeah i can't remember now but um yeah so it's a it's an an old ufo and I honestly don't remember the, what, what batting it is. So the way uh, the top age for child spaces here in Texas, there is no stated age. It just says parents with children. Yeah. It doesn't say little children or small children. It just says children. And I'm sure there are people that abuse it with like their 17 year olds. I would say the photo on it looks like we should all know it's for small children. Yeah. It shows a stroller in the photo and a parent holding a little kiddo's hand or something like that. But um yeah, it doesn't really say. Yeah. 
I, I would think that like if you can walk around without a stroller, you're probably too old to park in that. But but I also know like five year olds are just a hassle. So <laughs> I was one of those people who if I was going to the store with my kids by myself and I know it's like a hot topic and everything but i always put one of those little backpack leashes on my kids because they wanted to walk <laughs> and you know that was a way they could get out energy if they walked out the store but i also knew that i wouldn't be able to hold their hand and keep a close eye on them and shop at the same time so the little backpack went on and we we all had a good time shopping and people glared sometimes and <laughs> i've glared right back <laughs> like I know it's a, you know, it's con it's a controversial thing, but that's what I did. And none of my kids got lost. So. Uh, Amy says car returning is something that psychologists and anthropologists use to determine moral character. <laughs> I have heard that. I don't know if I want to believe it only because if that's true, then no one in Texas has morals. <laughs> I legitimately, the last time I went to Costco, um, I had a long walk um, to get to the store and, and back. And I did not see a single person return their cart. And there were more carts in between parking spaces than there were in the cart corrals. You so know, it's just, if that's true, then there are no more that exist in society. At Costco, I think I'll give people, no, not really a pass, but I feel like I have to give people a pass because when I get out of that store, I want to be far away from it. <laughs> that That's one store he has to trick me into going to Literally. because I do not, I despise going there. I do not like going to Costco at all. Not because I dislike the things there, but it's so crowded. I just don't want to be there. So I think most people probably feel that way and just want to leave. <laughs> I think that's true. Uh, but you still have to do your civic duty and put the damn No, we always, yes, we, we always, always do. But I also think on some things, you know, like, I don't know. Just not got to let it go sometimes. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know you don't. I mean, but it's like for me where I don't let it go when it, I have to hear somebody chew next to me. Oh, yeah. Well, that's misophonia. That's like a real thing. Um, Zaza says in the UK, trolleys or carts or metal and can do a lot of damage. Yeah, here, at least everywhere that I've gone, um, they're made out of steel. And if they get going on a windy day, like they can clearly like put a big dent in your car that will require a decent amount of money to fix, which makes it even worse when people leave them around. Oh, here we go. Amy. Uh, people who yell at gate agents or cashiers. I'll throw yeah. in there any service profession. Like those people, service people, whether they're waiters, gate agents, whatever, they're not trying to make, uh, there may be some who are trying to make your life miserable, but they're not trying. Like they're at a job, working a job they probably don't enjoy, and they're just as miserable as everyone else. Yelling at them does not solve anything. Especially for me, it's servers. Like if I order a steak, medium rare and it comes to me well done that is not the server's fault they're not the ones cooking the steak so i'm not going to yell at them i mean i wouldn't yell, well, you wouldn't yell at the but, cook hey, either. Eat this, but, um shit happens people need to get over it but yelling at people who have absolutely no control over what you perceive as their failures is garbage i think we all have to work in some sort of service profession i feel like we should all be required to so we just understand what goes into it i remember when i worked at sunglass hut um, somebody got mad at me because it was literally some, even if I wanted to, I could not have done it for them. Like they want, this was so long ago that they paid with a check and they wanted cash back for it, for the return. And I'm like, I literally can't like with the amount of money, we have to mail you a check in the mail. Like I don't have that in my cash register. The system does not let me do it. And he threw the sunglasses at me. I was like, oh, this is fun. Yeah. Yeah, I think, so I think everyone should have to serve two years. I don't even think you have to serve two years in the military. I think everyone should have to go through boot camp. Like Marine Corps. Boot no, camp. Like three, I'm not doing that. Three full months. I'm not voting for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not running, so. I think people need to go through boot camp so they can understand what their limitations are and what it means to actually work hard. And it, after the three months, you're done. You don't have to do anything else, but you had to go through it. Nope, no. Uh, no I'll move. <laughs> I, and then I think right after that, you need to do like a year in a service profession. 
where you're getting yelled at on a daily basis so you can understand the side of humanity that you need to to get along in the world and i think then we would be much better off but yeah i'm not running for a damn thing that will <laughs> never happen never gonna happen that's uh, good because i wouldn't vote for you and i wouldn't vote for you <laughs> if i got my way like the country would crumble <laughs> At least you're self-aware of that. Right. Um, is Navy close enough? No, it's not. <laughs> um, I have had friends in the Navy. I worked with with people in the Navy because Marine Corps is a partner of the Navy. And the stories they told me about boot camp, it's like, did you guys like go to boot camp or were you on vacation? Like, I don't. How come none of the branches get along? Y'all need to just be kind to each other. That's never gonna happen. <laughs> um. Oh, so uh, Jay Klein Atlin, Jay Klein Atlin says, "My biggest pet peeve is people using their phone while driving or eating while driving. Ugh, eating eat while driving while isn't <laughs> like that one doesn't bother me so much, um, <laughs> unless it becomes hazardous. Like if you're just sitting there picking at some fries, like I'm generally okay with that. The one that I don't it, is a pet peeve, but it's more because it's just so dangerous. I see women putting makeup on when they're driving. I see women with eyeliner with the damn." you know, <laughs> colored <their> pencil <laughs> on their eye. And I'm like, if someone rear ends you, or if you're not paying it, you're going to lose your eye. It's like, why are you risking your eyes? So like, just wait until you get where you're going. Like, it's not that big of a deal. I never understood that one, but I think it's mainly because I've never, like, I, I don't really wear makeup. So I don't, I guess I don't really understand what all it, it entails to get all that on in the morning if, if, if you do wear that. So I don't know. I wouldn't do it, but it's also hard for me to understand just because I don't wear makeup. Yeah, like the most I, <laughs> the most I do is mascara sometimes. Um, but I'm always in awe of people who can put makeup on because I've never been able to. Mainly, why I don't, I end up looking like a clown person. So <laughs> it's like a talent I've never had. Sorry, I'm not laughing at you. So with Debbie says, quite the topic to step into. I thought this was a quilting channel. <laughs> We're, we do Sometimes all sorts of it stuff. Is. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so Auntie Handmade says that uh, her best friend when she was in tech school in the Air Force was the one and only Marine going to the same school. Yeah, Marines, we don't have any funding. So like I did jump school with the Army. I did uh, scuba school with the Navy. I did my SEER training. Um, with the Navy, um, like survival is what is survival evade escape, survival escape resist evade. I don't remember. It doesn't sound like the Marines are all that great that they have. Uh, been, like, no, I don't know my sniper training with the Marines. <laughs> like we don't let anyone do that with us. But yeah, we do. It's just cross training. Although I don't know many schools that the Air Force has that the Marine Corps would use because they don't typically let us do things with computers. Um, yeah, y'all weren't smart enough. Well, most <laughs> um, so yeah, so, um, <laughs> so with Wayne says, but then why did they put the makeup mirror on the driver's side? <laughs> that's a good question. I have no idea why that's there. I will say though, there are times where I have long eyelashes. It's very frustrating. So I have to use it sometimes to get an eyelash out of my eye. Um, so. Well, I think it might be that the lighting's better because I know there's a lot of like these joke videos where people talk about how they keep the their tweezers in the car so they can tweet like women like so they can tweet the little facial hairs we have popping up which i have to say is not fair i've never had an issue with it until i had my kids and now i'm like growing a full beard it feels like sometimes mm, i don't think you have a full beard well yeah because <laughs> we we have yours to compare to but for me it feels like feels like it i'd yeah. love to get i you know, I, I always say I would love to get laser hair removal done, so I just don't have to worry about it. But then I'm also really worried I'd be one of those people who get, like, the state, like, the spots. Because you know how they say that some people get those, like, it looks like burn spots that are permanent? Oh. I feel like that would happen to me. So Jean wants to know what it is about the, we believe to be polyester bedding that you do not, or batting that you do not like. Um... I don't like the way it kind of 
crunches under under here like with the cotton batting i use it's just kind of smooth but it kind of feels like crunchy it feels like little. honestly it feels rough it feels like if you've got a husband with a beard and you rub your hands against it that's what and i can like. feel it through the fabric so i just don't like the way oh, yeah i don't like that i don't like the way it feels as much if i hadn't got this far in this i probably would have switched it out but i'm so far i'm hoping it softens up when it washed when it gets washed um but you but, really don't like anything but cotton batting generally yeah either. i love the feel of cotton batting now i haven't uh i haven't tried some people try have told me to try bamboo and wool those are more expensive Ooh, bamboo i would be all for yeah but i haven't tried those yet but i usually go with all cotton but it's just the feel of it between the layers i just don't love the way it feels um now I don't think it's a blend with cotton, so that could be the difference too. I've tried some that are like a blend between cotton and polyester, which I've been fine with, but my preference has been the 100% cotton. Uh, thank you very much, Jake Klein Atland. Um, I uh, I speak a handful of different languages, and I've had to communicate with people in languages that I don't understand. So what did you pronounce well? Her name. Oh. Um, I don't. So I've, I've tried well. to. I always try to do my best to pronounce people's names as I think they should be pronounced, and I typically try to um, make sure that I enunciate properly. He's so. also really good with um, what's it called? Like, I guess it's still never mind. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like with getting um, not accents, but pronouncing stuff correctly. Like when we go to restaurants. Oh, with, um, yeah, but that's just a, that's one because I speak a couple different languages. But two, English is like the one language where we have different sounds for everything. Yeah. But most languages like German or, or a lot of the Latin based languages, all the consonants and vowels are always pronounced the same. So you're able to just look at a word and know exactly how it's pronounced. Uh, I wish English were like that, but it's not. So you can roll your R's and all that stuff that I can't do. You were really good when we were taking German, too. Yep. Not good with that. I'm not good with language, but I'm horrible at English, so <laughs> I can't pronounce anything. <laughs> oh, Lorelai's here. Hi, Lorelai. Hi, Lorelai. What are you She's doing? She's probably already gone. Oh, <laughs> uh, where was she going? No, I mean out of the oh, video. Maybe. <laughs> That's our daughter. Yeah. That's one. No, oh, I guess they figured because she said hi, parents. So yeah, yeah. I didn't she... see what she said. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to get her started on her pet peeves because she'll be here forever. Yeah, because she started driving, so. <laughs> um, so we'll go to question number two. What was question number one? Well, the pet peeves one. Oh. So question number two is um would you rather live in a remote area with no internet access or on a boat with complete internet access a boat would terrify me um i generally feel like i would be fine without internet access i just like for my job our job right now that wouldn't be like a good idea if we needed you know money <laughs> Yeah, but I feel like if you're living in a remote area or on a boat, you, but you're probably not making money. Although I guess if you lived on a boat with internet access, you could, you know, work a remote job. Yeah, a boat. I just like I like the idea of going on a cruise. I, I like the idea. I like, but I just feel like I would be in panic mode all the time. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the other thing is, too, if, in this conversation, if you're living in a remote area with no internet access, as long as you can figure out how to survive, you probably don't need a job because you can just live off the land. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to do that. Well, <laughs> um, I, for me, I would probably, like, so I just came up with this question just to see sort of where people divvied up. Um, and I threw the internet in there for things. I could totally live on a boat. I wouldn't need internet access. Like, I think we'd be better off without it. Although I think we would all be a bit. <laughs> thing to say, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, the, it's weird. The ocean terrifies me, but if I'm on a boat, I think I'd be okay. Um, 
Look, I've, I've been on an aircraft carry. That's totally fine. It doesn't bother me at all. It's when I'm in like a smaller boat. And I love jet skis. So those don't have a problem. But Oh, see, I was thinking it'd be like a cruise ship type thing. That no, I was thinking you're like your own like... personal yacht, basically. Oh. So a 40-foot boat that has a bedroom, yeah, a bathroom, Yeah, still kitchen. negative. <laughs> I feel like the movement, I would constantly feel like we're going to sink. Um, I like... Uh, Renee says, I'd live on a boat docked in a remote area. <laughs> yeah, there you That's go. That's a genius. <laughs> um, and then Zaza also says, uh, the boat would need to be on dry land. Mm -hmm. so she's she's in your camp. Yeah. Um, how big is the boat, says So With Daddy. The boat would be large enough for you to have your bedroom, a living area, a kitchen, a bathroom, a functioning bathroom. So I'm thinking like a 40 foot regal. It's yacht, like basically, basically like a yacht type yeah, thing. You yeah, have to not have not like a fishing boat. Like, <laughs> yeah, not like a fishing little boat. little um, <laughs> that you would take out day fishing or something. Yeah, that'd be oh, that'd be awful. I don't know. I I don't think I could do it. Um. Auntie Handmaid said she's retired to no work issue. She would need a phone for emergency use. I think that's fair. Um, houseboats are amazing. I've heard that. I've never lived on one. but uh, I don't even think I've ever been on one. They look really nice from that one show we watched, the yacht, the yacht thing, you know, on... You know where you look at people's million dollar lots oh, on that yeah, one yeah, channel? Yeah. I think we watched a few of them. I think they have a little snippet of it on that one movie too, Overboard, mm -hmm. where he's watching them yeah. on his little yacht. So with Debbie says they kayak in the ocean. So oh my goodness, I, I used that. to kayak all the time, loved it. Um, and I, I love the water. It's just, as long as I can see the coast, um and the waters aren't too rough it's just like i've had to jump into water in the middle of nowhere in the dark of night from a plane that's twenty thousand feet in the, in the air um and that was like totally fine mm -hmm. but i also knew that the waters i was jumping into had no like deadly animals that were going to try and attack me how would you know that because they the parts of the world i was in did not have those animals that doesn't make sense. but like being in the ocean that creeps the shit out of me because it's like i don't know what's out there that's gonna like We've not explored, but like three percent of the ocean floor. So God knows what kind of crazy animals are out there that can come up and like snag you. I am not athletic at all. I feel like if I was trying to kayak in the ocean, I'd be one of those people you see on the news where they're out there rescuing them because they ended up like drifting off and needing help. <laughs> uh, Janice is going to stay on a houseboat next week, so that'll be fun. That's fancy uh Jacqueline says hello just now watching so I think if you're new Jacqueline welcome you're probably confused, you're confused. that we're, we're yapping yeah. about stuff that has doesn't have to do with quilting um Luane says imagine today's kids trying to survive 20 or 40 years ago I would I would amend that and say imagine to like today kids that are like in their teens today Imagine them trying to live in the 80s. Shit, that is 40 years ago. <laughs> Good God. Uh -huh. All right, well, I stand corrected. You're right, boy. The 80s were 40 years ago. Yeah, we're old. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, oh, so with Debbie says she was just snorkeling. Here's, I, I can scuba dive oh. all day long. I cannot, okay. I don't, I, snorkeling and I do not mix. I, I understand how it's supposed to be done. But no matter what happens, I always go under the water deeper than I'm supposed to. And then I just end up choking on water. Which is, I'm a very intelligent person. And the fact that I can't figure out snorkeling is going to like annoy me till the day I die. But I can't. I just can't snorkel. It's my biggest fault, I think. That's your biggest fault. <laughs> it absolutely is. I can't snorkel. It's like five-year-old kids can snorkel. I can't do it. And I can swim very well. I just can't snorkel. I, just, I don't understand it. Well, I know it won't make you feel better, but I I can't snorkel either. That doesn't make me feel better. <laughs> I knew it wouldn't. <laughs> you can't. Have you even ever tried though? Yeah. Yeah, but no. not, like not like in an ocean, but like you know, you get the you were in the bathtub. Like what is? No, like at a lake because I grew up in Florida, and there's lakes <laughs> everywhere. 
And I tried doing it there because, you know, that's what we did back then because you weren't in the house ever. <laughs> you were outside doing something. Yeah. Yeah. And we had like the snorkel and the little mass thing and it just filled up with water and I suffocated myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I mean, not really, but. <laughs> okay, question number three. What is a hobby you would like to learn? Hmm. Snort, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I think I would like to get better at stained glass again because I learned it, but never really perfected it. You know, like I mean, I saw some of the stuff you did. It was really nice. It is, it is. Really you nice. know how hard I am on myself about yes. literally everything I do. So I would like to get, I would like to get better. I think it would be fun to make like in something like, you know, like a lamp or something. Oh, I just did too. like, I did like small little projects. Yeah. I don't know with what time this would get learned or done in, but this is like an imaginary thing, right? Like where you're like, oh, this would be a fun little thing to learn how to do. Yeah. Um, you want to learn how to snorkel? No, no, I don't. You've given up on that one? I, I just like, mm -hmm. I understand. Like You understand how to do it. It's like, how do you judge where you swim? Oh, it's, or something? it's not even that. It's like, I can hold my breath for like a minute and a half. Like I don't need a snorkel. Like I'm not gonna miss anything. Like I, I just don't understand the snorkel. Like if you can't breathe, if you can't hold your breath, you probably shouldn't be. I think your head it's because the then you don't have to go up and down, up and down, and look at stuff. You can just swim along and look at everything. Um. So for hobbies, a lot of people said woodworking. Woodworking is such a fun hobby. Hmm. Um. I think once you get into it, it's hard to get out of it. And it's very relaxing. It can be very frustrating too when you're trying to make something and it doesn't work out. But see, that's oddly something I have no interest in because there's power tools involved. So um, it took him forever to get me to use a drill. That's where that's I'm absolutely with, true. With the power tools. Uh, Siberian Wind says the hobby of Marie Kondo. I don't know what that is, Sagan. You may have to. Uh... Uh, she's like organizing, like, uh -huh. and it's organizing, and then um, where you let go of things that don't bring you joy, like a strict decluttering of your. How do you stuff. do that with other people? Huh? How do you get rid of other people that don't bring you joy? <laughs> I was so confused. I'm like, I don't know. I guess you could invite friends over to declutter <laughs> with you, like help. <laughs> um, I think that's what that I think that's what that is i wish i was good at um organizing i'm not luane says metal or woodworking so luane i know how to metal work i used to do it quite a bit i just don't have the equipment now and i don't have the time but i do love metal working um and i really like being able to mesh metal and woodworking because you can make some really cool stuff um using both Teresa Lynch says thread painting. Do you know what that is? I don't know. So it's like where you use different colors of thread and you stitch them together really close to make art. Like you could make, uh, like, say, like a flower or something. So like embroidery, but hand? Um, I don't know. Okay. I've seen people do it recently, and I think that's essentially what it is. I don't think it's quite like embroidery. It's more where you're making actual, like, artwork. Hmm. Then. Kathy Klein says rug hooking. No, oh, that um, looks so fun. I've seen some cool stuff on Reddit where people are doing that and it looks really cool. And I like the meticulous nature of it after they do it and they shave it down and they yeah, I, it, it looks, really, it looks cool. really fun. Um Amy wants to surf, play guitar and piano and yoga. You've got a lot of hobbies uh on deck, Amy. Surf surfing is one that just I have no interest in. Um I don't really I understand it. I cannot see myself in a wetsuit. <laughs> uh, I, I surfed when I was younger because I lived in California and I live on the beach. So I just, it was okay. Part of the problem too is I think in San Francisco, you're wearing a dry suit because the water's 60 degrees. Um, and it really is just not enjoyable for more than like 20 minutes. Maybe if I lived in a warmer area, it would be fun. But I guess, yeah, that's the only time I've ever seen it was when I lived in California for a bit and they all had wetsuits on. But yeah, I guess you don't really have to wear that, right? Because in that that one movie I like that you hate, they're never wearing them. Because they're in Hawaii. That I can't think of what it's called. So I don't know. It's a surfing movie. Okay. I don't 
You know I'm terrible with the names of stuff. Uh, oh, screen printing. Screen printing looks so cool. Um, I love watching. I, I There's a thread on Reddit called um, Damn That's Interesting and Oddly Satisfying. Those are like my two favorite threads. But they always have random videos of people doing um, screen printing, and it looks so cool. So my high school art teacher was amazing, and we tried, we got to try that, and we did this thing where you made your own, like, it wasn't really a rubber stamp, but you carved, a ru like, rubber out to mm -hmm. make a design, and we layered it, like, each of our layers mm -hmm. had to have, and then you stamped it on top of each other to make art. That's she, was an, she was an awesome art teacher, and it was really neat because... After she left um, the high school where I was at, she went and got a job somewhere else. And I never really, we didn't really know where she went. It's not like they like run that by us as students. Uh, but when I went to community college um, for my last year of high school, uh, she was there teaching art. So I, think I got to, I got her as an art teacher again. Very cool. Julie is here. Hi, Julie. She said she'd want to learn knitting. I love knitting, used to do it all the time. It's really fun. And it's practical because you can like make yourself stuff to wear in the cold weather. I like knitting. I find it really relaxing. Amy says blacksmithing and glass blowing. Oh, that's cool. We're gonna do that, aren't we? We're gonna try. So that where we live or near where we live, there's a like an actual blacksmith. For and you can take birthday, classes there. Um, and there's a class where it's like a day-long class and you get to like, you know, forge and make your own knife, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I love all of like the, you know, middle age trades, blacksmithing. Um, I think horseshoeing would be really cool. Um, oh, I poked myself. That wasn't smart. So I completely agree. I think, and glass blowing. I had a friend who did glass blowing. It looked really cool. Um, I was never all that interested because I don't like being hot, but <laughs> I, I guess that probably we're going to do that with me. Well, yeah. but, um, so singing lessons for Sherry. I can't sing a, a tune, but that's not something I think can ever be fixed. Our so. daughter could, if she if she had kept <clears throat> taking lessons, because she took some for a while, she has a really pretty singing voice, but she has no interest in it. So, uh, Luane says, conquer is fear and learn sky. Dude, skydiving is easy. You jump out of a plane. It's literally that simple. No. Like, learning how no, to no, properly no, no, use no, a parachute no, no, and no. land, that's a little bit more difficult. No. But Jumping out of a plane is very easy. I loved it. No. It was so much fun. I strongly disagree. There's with that nothing like the rush you of could, jumping out you of a plane. You can barely get me into a plane. <laughs> <laughs> I don't love. Um, mm -mm. Um, nope. I think you'd love it if you tried it. No, I would not. Yeah, I absolutely. <laughs> you couldn't even get me to jump over that puddle. That's true. <laughs> no, here's the thing that I, I think people don't understand is is oh we understand it why jump out from a perfectly good plane? no you see here's the thing you jump out you're scared as hell like i'm not because i enjoy it but you'd be scared as hell then we would float down to the surface land softly and you'd be like oh my god i survived and then you'd be like that was so much fun no yeah that that works. would never happen it's fun uh maple stitch would love to learn sashiko Oh, that's yeah. that stuff is so cool to watch. Mm -hmm. Again, I I apparently like watching random shit, but that mm -hmm. is really fun to watch. And it's cool how they come up with like cool designs. And I'm watching that. I'm like, oh, if I ever have a hole in my jeans, I'm gonna do that. And then, <laughs> of course, I don't remember how to do any of it. Mm -hmm. um, broom making is fun, says Charlotte. I don't. Mm -hmm. That seems kind of cool. Um, I've never seen one, but I could see how it could be cool. I've watched people weave um, like beds and stuff like we like the frame oh oh yeah yeah that was really cool um someone had mentioned basket weaving oh terry so fun story um the college the undergrad that i went to um there was a class you could take i'm not even joking in underwater basket weaving underwater yep, they did it with snorkels um, <laughs> so and they, you, you they, never could no take i never that class. <laughs> um, but they did it with snorkels and they did it in the uh the, i forgot what they call it the student center pool but why I, I because there's always that joke that you know people take underwater basket weaving in college and like they're like hey let's profit on this because there was you had to enroll in the course so you're paying god knows what for the course but then there was also like a 500 dollars fee for all the stuff that you had to pay the university for so 
Um, I mean, I probably would have tried taking it <laughs> just because I'd be curious. Ooh, Charlene signed up for a soap making class. Ooh, that'd be fun. that'll be fun. We I've made candles in the past, uh, but we did as a family. I did when I was younger, and candle making is really fun. But you need to have a lot of space if you want to do it upright, and we don't because we have everything else taking it up. <laughs> um, uh, yarn spinning on a spinning oh, wheel. Oh yes, that I looks would really love relaxing. To do that. Um, uh, Jacqueline would like to learn to knit. She knows how to crochet. If you know how to crochet, I feel like crochet no, is harder than knitting. I I feel like you can do one or the other, and you can't do both. Well, that could be true. <laughs> crochet. I know I some know how people can. I can't. I don't I know how to crochet. I can knit. I can't crochet. Crochet looks much harder than knitting. So it was for me. <laughs> um. Janice would like to work with resin. I use resin in some of my projects. Um, it, it can get messy, um, but when it's done right, it looks really good. I like the art people do with it where they, they, and I can't imagine how long it takes where they will say layer some, like paint a fish, like layer 3D because they keep layering on the resin and adding in mm -hmm. paint and stuff. I don't know how people do that or how they even come up with the idea then they need to know what to put in each layer. I just, I, some people in the art they make just it amazes me. Yeah, it really is. Um, it, I think I appreciate really inspiring, like art that like I look at and I'm like, I couldn't do it myself, which is most art, like, don't get me wrong. But when I see something really good, it's like, man, that just, just Yeah, like amazing you, you have an awe with like oil paintings. Oil paintings. I've tried oil painting and I I may have actually thrown the canvas. I think <laughs> you remember. got really mad. We bought like this whole Bob Bob Ross kit with oil paints. And I think all of didn't Hunter even all try? Four of us, yeah, yeah, we all tried. We watched like the video and he makes it look so easy. And he's like, I'll oh, just do this little whatever here and there. And you're like, you're looking at yours and you're like, goodness. Yeah, I, I yeah, I'm pretty good at paint. Like I'm not. For like mine looked, mm, it looked like mountains and trees, <laughs> but it did not look like it. <laughs> Oil, I, acrylic was so much easier. Acrylic and watercolor was so much easier for me. Yeah, so I, I don't like being bad at things. <laughs> he does and, not. And <laughs> so I was watching Bob Ross. And I'm like, this guy with the crow doing the stuff. I'm like, yeah, and he, he can do it. I can do it. And he tells you how to do it, which brush, Nothing. all this stuff. And no. uh, it was very frustrating. <laughs> and I will never attempt oil painting again because I know I will just get upset. And that's not sensible. Our cake adventure was much more fun for everyone. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we decided to do uh, like a, well, what, what's that show called? Uh, it's, um, not there was an attempt it was uh nailed it yeah it's like where you they give you a cake like that you try to recreate or whatever so what we did was we each had an emoji that we were we were supposed to make out of our cake and so we had like four little round cakes that we made and we each had fondant and we were supposed to make our emoji cake and it was a lot of fun the kids love they still talk about it sometimes yeah it was a fun family project uh, much better than the the, <laughs> the Bob Ross one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not uh, not a fan of the Bob Ross. One. Um, Amy says she enjoys the knowing, not the learning. I enjoy learning. I would spend all day in school if I could, but that unfortunately does not, you know, pay the bills. Um, but no, I would go back to school, and I could be a career uh, student. Uh, so I enjoy the learning aspect, but it has to be like something that I'm actually interested in. Like oil painting, I will never, I, I'm not going to learn that. So that's not going to happen. Um, but there's a lot of topics I would love to go back to school and learn. Um, if only just because most of the degrees I've earned are, um, with the exception of like math and physics, but you just get to sit there and debate ideas with people all day long, which I love, right? You just get to learn so much doing that. So. Um, 
So how many more rows of those? We're not going to count okay. them. <laughs> I don't know. A lot. A lot. And then I have to move on to. What are you going to do in here? I don't know. I think there was a lot of good ideas. I want to do a flower somewhere. So either in the center of that or in these over here somewhere. Um, there's a lot still needs. You got to gotta help me stitch this. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I know your wrist would die. <laughs> yeah, uh, not about that. Um, so, it's going to say something profound, uh, I'm profound sure. Profound and provocative. Uh -huh. Both of the pros. <laughs> I don't remember what it is now. That's okay. I haven't eaten dinner, so I, uh, my, well, you haven't either, have you? No. Nope. So, my brain isn't functioning as much as I would like. So I have a question, Amy. So it sounds like you know how to spin and weave. Do you actually have like a spinning wheel at your house? And if so, have you ever pricked your finger on it and then like woken up 30 years later? What? Sleeping Beauty. Is that what happened? Yeah, she got, I think so. She got pricked on her spinning or maybe it was one of the Disney princesses got pricked on a spinning wheel. Huh. Um, I thought it was... Sleeping Beauty. You have a much better memory than me, so you're probably right. I'm going to have to look it up now. Disney Princess Spinning Wheel. Um, God, searches has gotten so bad. Um, all this AI crap makes search engines suck. Um, Somebody will say in the chat. Yeah, it was we'll Sleeping Beauty. I did not know that. I thought she ate an apple or something. That's Snow White. Yeah. My kids are were you have a good memory, but our kids are way too old for me to remember any of those movies. <laughs> I'm not I'm I'm not a big animated movie fan at all. No, she's really not. Uh Cindy Van Oy says that the colors you were working with are gorgeous. Thank you. Um yeah, Sherry said yes, sleeping beauty. Um yeah, the um it's really frustrating because I think there are some really good animated movies. Like I love. Yeah, you love animated. Mr. Movies. Sherman and or Mr. Peabody and, and Sherman. And you like, um, yeah, I don't know a lot of. Them. Uh, I, I like love Sing. I love Monsters Inc. I love. Which is funny because animated movies have a lot of music in them, but you don't like musicals. I don't, but the animated movies are just so funny because they I don't write like in musicals like or adult animated movies. Parts of them, so. Um. Which is weird also because I like movies because of the unrealistic aspect to them. And um, I don't like musicals because I'm like, people aren't just going to break out in song in real life. So I'm really just, a, <laughs> well, I, I know really just they, don't make sense. Remember before COVID, they did all those flash mobs? Yeah, I guess People did true. actually break out? They were trying to get me to make, make the change and watch musicals. Um. So, I don't know. I'm just a mess. I don't know. I think everybody does, though, like where they they just have stuff that they just don't like for who knows why. It's a random reason. Say it again, babe. Like everybody has something where they that they don't like for a random reason that maybe you don't really you can't really pinpoint why. Yeah, like there's a lot of people like actors or actresses. That for some reason or another, I can't, I, I can't watch the whatever yeah, event for whatever. I don't know it. why. I just can't. Um, I, yeah, it's just a weird thing. It's like I can't watch that person in a movie or a whatever. Just, and I don't know why. It's just, maybe in my past life, someone that looked just like that harmed me <laughs> in some way. Um, I don't know why. Uh, Amy does have a spinning wheel. That's so um, cool. And it is Sleeping Beauty. You yeah. gotta do a little video, just like a short or something. We can just watch spin. <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of fun. I bet you it would be really relaxing to watch someone yeah. do that. So, I'm not gonna start a new row because we're gonna hop off soon. So, let me see. Did we have one more question or did we go through all of them? No, it was all three. Huh. Well, because we did the pet peeves, the boat or remote. And then the uh, hobby. Yep. Now I have a lot of hobbies I want to do because everybody had really good suggestions. <laughs> I know. It's just like I listen to everyone. It's like, oh, 
you said stained glass. I think that would be cool. Metalworking, I'd love to get back into. Knitting, I love. I don't have time for it. Um, painting, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Um, you, but didn't, I, you did not enjoy that one. Yeah. Oh, I would love to be good with calligraphy. That looks so difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, That's one I wouldn't even attempt because I know I wouldn't be good at it. <laughs> Uh, I would like, I think, I have, I used to watch people in videos do that, but my handwriting is atrocious, so I don't think I would ever be good at it. Zoe, oops, sorry, that's not the one I wanted to do. Um, Zoe Takahashi wants to know what your favorite thread is, and let me see if I can get it right, she'll correct me if I'm wrong. I think that for, for machine, using a domestic machine, you like um, Orophil, mm -hmm. but for the long arm, you like Clyde. Right now, I like Glide. I think I want to try some other stuff, though, because I would like a thread that stands out more. And the, the Glide's really thin, but it it was that's what I, was recommended to me. And I really like the way it looks kind of it shiny on there. Really it's cool. really pretty. But I know there was another thread that you were, you were trying to use Superior, and it just kept breaking, right? Yeah, I couldn't get that one to work, and I don't know why. Um, but we haven't had any issues with the uh, the Glide. Yeah. Running. I've used it. I love it. I'm very new on the long arm, though, so I'm sure that that'll change when I learn learn more. But I always use Orphil thread. This one, I think, is like a thicker... I don't know what weight it is. Um, I don't even see where it is on here. Probably because I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> but... Yeah, I usually use Orphil. Oh, Finca. But there's the brand is something else. I forgot. But this stuff is really fun. I use this for red work, red, red work, red well. Well, I what it's, called. it's basically just embroidery. Yeah. But um, yeah, I forgot what the real brand is. It's called I don't Finca, remember. But there's like a, I forgot the company that actually makes it, but it's really good. I like that stuff a lot. Um, so, yeah, um, I guess we'll, uh, I'll reiterate this one more time. Um, based on many requests, we have made um, essentially clear trim locks that are now available in our store, as well as um, a clear slide lock. The slide lock isn't up on the website right now because I haven't taken pictures of it, so it'll be up tomorrow. But, um, yeah, that's... There. Thank you, Amy. I thought it was 30, but my eyes can't read that print. So, no, there, yeah. That's Oracle? Uh -huh. Well, because it's a different weight than the one that I normally use when I'm sewing. Yes, it is 30. <laughs> Amy knows what she's talking about. Um, uh, Julie wants to know if we've ever been out to El Paso. Um, so I've been out to El Paso. There's a, a military base in El Paso, and I forgot what it's called. Um, Fort something or other. But they have an air assault school there. Um, so I've been to El Paso, uh, but it would have been 20-some-odd years ago. It is sort of cool in the sense that there are mountains there, and it is. I know it snows there quite a bit. Um, but... Uh, having been there and knowing people who still live there, it sounds like it's now very dangerous as a result of many things. So, um, haven't been out there anytime recent. Fort Bliss. Fort Bliss, yes, it is Fort Bliss. That is correct. I did not know that. Julie posted it. <laughs> oh, I was like, how did you? Um, Zaza, will we start shipping to the UK anytime? I, I, the answer is no, um, only because there are so many issues with customs that I haven't worked out. Uh, Shopify has started a new thing where they have like a fully, essentially they have a, um, a new shipping software that, that is supposed to basically completely, um, take care of all of the duties and taxes and shipping issues. So I'm going to look into it because they keep emailing me about it okay. because apparently like half of our traffic comes from international people. Um, so I need to look into it because if it is truly like a one size fits all and all we have to do is pay them a percentage of all sales, it may be worth it, but I haven't looked into it enough to know. Um, so, 
I will think about it. If um, the biggest issue is anytime we make an international shipment, because we've done it before, like the first couple months, we we tried it. Um, it's just a lot of work. So we have to print out like customs forms. We have to sign them. We have to physically sign them in front of. It's just a lot of work. And I I know that that sounds annoying to you guys, but um, and it's hard because. Um, if anything's damaged on the way, we have to um, reship it and hope that the carrier we used like refunds us because it's not your fault. Right. Um, but the shipping for us to do out of pocket at that point, along with the product, is is just a lot because that happened to us too, and we don't always get a re like um our connect like our connection through shopify really tries to advocate for us to get the refund with the shipping carriers but it all always isn't yeah it ideal just doesn't doesn't happen sometimes so like we yeah, have i some of you may know that a, what, a couple months back i think in february january february i don't remember what it was ups lost like three full days of our packages which was a ton and like we lost several hundred dollars ultimately because they didn't refund yeah, some, of the packages. some of them got delivered late right but yeah some so, didn't and we and when a lot of them started showing up we shipped ones to other people who didn't have them and yet because they had everyone had waited so patiently for yeah. so long but it was just a mess so yeah they do crazy stuff like they we were able to file claims like 10 days after the packages didn't arrive then they took their sweet ass time getting us the claim form. So it took another 10 days. So by the time that we had filled out the claims where UPS had said, yes, we lost your package. Um, it was like a month later. So we submit everything. We, we sent out replacement products to the people that had purchased them because it's not fair to make them wait. And then UPS 40 days later is like, oh, by the way, we found it. We're going to deliver it. And we don't care that you sent out replacement. And so now we have sent two products and we don't get anything back. So. Um, those are the issues that brighten us with international shipping because if we're spending whatever it is and we send it over to you and if something happens, then we have to pay for it. So, um, it's, uh, it stinks. It's not fair. And I wish that there was like an easier way to do things where, you know, like shipping right now is so different than it used to be because you would have all these guarantees. Like if you paid for two day shipping, yeah. they would guarantee two day shipping but now they're like you pay extra for that but if it doesn't get there they don't do the guarantee anymore they're just like oh well you're out that extra money and it took five days to get there yeah <laughs> so um but i will look into um what the shopify um international thing is yeah because if they help us that was the biggest part really was the the duties and all that kind of stuff you just said duty on live show you did too. Well, only because you did. <laughs> um, so, all right, everyone, we are going to go have dinner because it's late and we haven't. And um, I hope I finish this this year. <laughs> no. <laughs> you may never get to finish it, but that's okay. It's like eight years in, in progress. No, because it was, you yeah. got the idea for that after going to, because was this, you know, when did you do this? I don't know. A long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll, I'll try to make sure I have a different project to work on next week. So it's not you seeing me with the same one over and over again. So I'll work on that to make sure I have something else going on. Yep. But we will see you again next Wednesday. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Yep. My stomach's growling. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you all and, didn't hear that. Hello, Vicky. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're going to go grab some food so that we can move on. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us and we will talk to you next week. Bye.